Hey, this is Andrew Brown from ExamPro, and we are looking at database services. Uh, and so you can see we have a variety of different services uh, for databases on AWS. Uh, and for the actual exam, you probably just need to know DynamoDB, RDS, Aurora, and Redshift. Um, but when you're taking the exam, they might throw in these other ones to just throw you off. And so by knowing all of them through process of elimination, you can determine what the correct answer is. Okay, so I think it's going to be good for us to learn them all. Uh, and so just starting at the top here with DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL key value database. Uh, and so I always like to say that it's Cassandra-like or Cassandra-based, uh, because I think at one point it was, or at least it is very similar to it. And so uh, this is a very flat and simple database, which can scale to millions of records and will give you a guarantee of read and writes per second, okay? So if you needed to say 200 reads, uh, per second, you just enter that in and you'd get a guarantee of it. All right. Uh, moving on to document DB, which is a NoSQL document uh, database uh, that is MongoDB compatible. So if you need MongoDB, you're going to be using document DB. Then we have RDS, which stands for the relational database service. Okay. And it's probably the most popular um, uh, database on AWS and the most commonly used, and it supports multiple engines. So you can use MySQL, Postgres, MariaDB, Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server, all right? And it happens to have uh, one other engine called Aurora. And so Aurora is really its own thing. And it is a fully managed relational database, okay? And within it, uh, you can choose uh, to either run MySQL or Postgres. And so because it's fully managed, uh, it has a greater performance over the regular uh, MySQL Postgres RDS. And you're going to see MySQL, it has a, uh, a better performance of up to five times, whereas Postgres has up to three times. Now, Aurora, again, is highly available and durable. And so uh, when, it, uh, when you spin up an Aurora cluster, it's going to be running... Um, six copies of your database across three availability zones. Okay, so uh, with that, um, it definitely is uh, more expensive uh, than using RDS. But if you are an enterprise or you need that guarantee of um, availability and durability, you're definitely going to want to use Aurora. Uh, now moving on to Aurora Serverless, it's pretty much the same thing as Aurora uh, with uh, uh, less features. Uh, but the huge advantage here is that um, it's it's way more inexpensive. So this is kind of like a relational database where it's on a need be basis. OK, so the idea is that you're only paying for um, when you're using it, just like kind of like a Lambda. OK. Uh, and it's really good for development workloads or web apps that are not, not frequently used um, or if you're using a serverless architecture, okay? So it makes it really easy to uh, connect Lambdas to Aurora serverless. Now, moving on to Neptune, it is a managed graph database. That's all you need to know. Uh, then we're on to a Redshift. So Redshift is a columnar store database, okay? So instead of reading via rows, it reads via columns. And so it's really, really good um, uh, working with uh, uh, a, a huge amount of data where you need to uh, generate maybe um, an, uh, like reports or analytics, like a business intelligence tool, and it can handle petabytes worth of data, okay? So... Uh, there's like a thousand terabytes in one petabyte. So that is a significant amount of data. Moving on to ElastiCache, um, it is a caching solution. So you can either choose to use uh, the open source um, uh, caching uh, databases here, uh, uh, Redis or uh, Memcache. Okay, so if you need caching, that's going to be uh, your choices here. So there you go. That's all the uh, database services.